Um, and we, we've had some some people coming in already with their own views on this situation. Here is one from Jimmy saying, Billy Sharp goaded the Forest fans. We would never say that justifies the actions of the fans who headbutted him. But why are we justifying Vieira's actions here? But I'm not sure we're comparing. I mean, we, we, Billy Sharp and Ollie McBurn, and I had a journalist friend that was sat behind the dugout that told me this before... Um, the game had actually finished, and so I brought it onto the show the next morning and said, well, whilst, whilst it does not condone their behaviour, players have got to behave themselves. So what has Patrick Vieira done? Patrick Vieira has watched an invasion in the 85th minute, mm -hmm. which he was very unhappy with, wanted the teams to come off so that the, the place could be settled down because he knew what was imminently coming. He's walked off a pitch in front of a bunch of allegedly celebrating Everton fans, and being confronted by things that he shouldn't have to be confronted with. In an ideal utopian world, he shouldn't react that way. But he shouldn't be put in a position yeah, like that. 100%. So Everton, should Everton, he be punished is the well, big I think question, it's very, I, I think if you, want to, if, you, if you want to make the law an ass, then, then by all means punish him. If you want to look at the unique circumstances and suggest that a football manager and his players should never be put in a situation where they're being confronted with situations that like that. We heard Neil Warnock talking about a situation that happened to him when with my team, Palace, in the playoff semi-finals against Bristol City, where he experienced the same thing. It's not part of the job description. Yeah, yeah, get some abuse on the touchline. Get barracked and whatever else. You don't get immersed, swamped by a group of fans with some of them who have the wrong intentions. Mm. So I think it would be very difficult from a moral standpoint and from a real objectively balanced, pragmatic outlook rather than some ridiculous bureaucratic claptrap to charge Patrick Vieira for reacting to something that was in his space that I think 99% of people, and specifically the people that would be making the adjudication, would have done precisely the so same thing. So if you're his chairman this morning, are you speaking to him and saying, I'm backing you? Of course. Of course, I'm asking Everton why the configuration of the stadium was set up in such a way that the players had to go down one particular part of the stadium. I'm like asking these for, clubs, yeah. why don't we prepare for these exceptional circumstances to understand what's coming on? I'm asking football... Do, Frank Lampard has just condoned it. Do we want to accept fans coming on the pitch? If we do, and we but and you can't say well if they, if they behave themselves because you can't you can't guarantee that, right? So you either want fans to stay off the pitch and remove that scenario, or you have to legislate for it and plan for it and marginalise it, or you have to accept that if a manager is put in a position like this, that the circumstances he was put in do not then lead him to be in consequence unless he's done something ridiculous and been the provocateur, which he uh, hasn't been. Susanna no. says, I agree with Simon, this is a whole new generation of young adults that believe they have the right to do anything they want without being held responsible. Vieira shouldn't be prosecuted and I think that's right. for this. And Steve for, from Pompey says, what pa Patrick did was called a preemptive strike. Self-defence, nothing more. Um, would you be on the side of what Simon is saying? Of course. So the be. FA should show leniency to Patrick Vieira? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know whether there's a precedent on this. I'm trying to. We're looking back at the Brian Clough situation where Brian wasn't actually being attacked, was he? Uh, and he went in to cuff somebody over the head. Uh, he was. He did suffer a, a touchline ban for the rest of that season, but he did uh, take the team out to Wembley in '89 in the Little World Cup. So mm -hmm. he was. He was kind of uh, given that opportunity to do that. So it's a bit different. I think Patrick's surrounded. I will say as well. Well done to the Evertonian that came to Patrick's Yes, defense, we should give that credit. There was a few. Uh, a and few. saw, yeah, yeah. That, that made that kind of workable for Patrick to get away there because we wouldn't have wanted to see that escalate. And that's the problem, is the fans. And and we don't want to see rival fans coming onto the pitch. And we've not seen that really in either of these two incidences. No. And that would escalate even further. But no... I, I will support Patrick to the absolute hilt there. This this just a text coming in now. Martin, you goaded Van Nistelrooy, but he didn't kick you. You can't act like Vieira did. That's what Teddy No, but talking. I was allowed on the pitch. And you can say whether my behaviour was right or wrong, but the fans aren't allowed on the pitch. And once they do and they step out of line, it's hard to then defend them. And Patrick was defending himself last night. It was self-defence. Mm. He didn't really know that was going to escalate. If you put yourself in that sort of situation, the only time I've ever been on a pitch like that when we, when Ryan Giggs scores, I think, that goal at Villa Park, and all of a sudden I've got Manchester United fans all around me, roughing me up, pushing me and, and backing into me and wanting to bounce but around you showed them. restraint. You didn't. We had to. We had to. You almost had to run for your lives. Mm. What I don't understand quite in a lot of these games, I, I was... Going from channel to channel, I was watching with a great deal of interest Port Vale versus Swindon last night. Uh, you know, that was a penalty shootout there. Port mm -hmm. Vale, I believe, going through. So, yeah. why the players don't get off the pitch as quick as they can? You know, the Swindon players were being attacked, 
But you get the hell out there. We get off the pitch and get away. I, I I know the fans shouldn't come on it, come on the pitch. I think lower down the tables, we do see this though. We well, don't quite that, see it I in the Premier League. But the question has to be asked, and it has to be answered. Do we believe that football fans have an entitlement, in whatever circumstance they deem that entitlement to be theirs, to go on a pitch? If the answer is yes, then, you get, the to be on the pitch. then you get what you've got. If the answer is no, what are you going to do? Do you know what the thing is? It? I'm a goody two shoes. I'm a person that stays off the pitch. I've yeah. always done that. That's also partly because I want to enjoy the moment with my friends and my family in the seat that I've sat in for yep. you know X amount of years. I don't see the need to run on a pitch. I've never seen the need to run on a pitch. No, I think either. it's bizarre. But that is unfortunately what's been going on for decades. Yep. So we can't say this is a new thing. Um, the problem is what I can't understand. If, if I'm brutally honest, we've had football for a while where fans weren't allowed in, yep. and we were desperate to get back in and as soon as we're given the opportunity to, to get back in we're now seeing scenes like this which but is absolutely language, the, I mean, again, again I'm, as a football fan myself mm. otherwise I would have never bought a football club so don't I'm not going to allow myself to be marginalised as some ballroom jockey that doesn't know what he's talking about and lives in a prawn sandwich world right I look at it and say through that period of time fans and, and, and the, the element of the way the media has reported fans entitlement what they're entitled to think what they're entitled to do language being used by people like Gary Neville talking about Manchester United fans needing to mobilise people telling everyone that the European Super League was stopped by the fans people telling people that there's a justification behind fans having very strident views I'd like to hear by the way I'd like to hear seemingly the mute fan supporters groups that have very quick, big voices when it's what they're entitled to coming out and condemning this sort of behaviour because I haven't heard anything Think from the fans supporters. But you have said in the past that fans are entitled to have their opinion. They're of course allowed they to. Are. Of course so they are. So some fans but, will look at this as, oh, I'm entitled a, to run that, on there that's and not celebrate. An opinion, and it's not an but entitlement. There's not an opinion, but they might look at it that, upon that's that. That's an act that they've chosen to do because there's a sense of entitlement born out of a sense of dialogue. And we've got the media. The media are focusing down on it, going, look at all those fans celebrating on the pitch. If the message is fans shouldn't be on the pitch, why do we have people turning around? Well, surely and saying, though, you can blame the media, but can't you blame the FA no, then for not taking more action? I'm not blaming the action? media. I'm saying no, that but you're that saying we're, we're celebrating the fans I'm on the pitch. I'm saying that there has to be a common message, and there has to be a common. If we believe that this is a situation that is is has is fraught with jeopardy, which is proving to be, then in, you know if we can run around, put it can't badges be acceptable the, that these fans are running on the pitch. No, it cannot it's interesting, be. Natalie, and it I needs mean, to be stopped. What I played, was it 800 games, 900 games in my playing career? A handful of times I can remember fans coming on the pitch in really exceptional circumstances. All of a sudden now this week, we're seeing it everywhere. Mm. So we can't condone it. We, we need to make sure that this is eradicated. We don't want it to be commonplace. So don't be listening to this show thinking, yeah, I'm going to run on next time. No, no, no. Just don't do it. Well, the sad thing but is it, it mars the, the accomplishments of some of these but teams. It can't be the FA and the EFL. What the argument would be, it's the FA and the EFL's job to sanction the clubs. OK, it's not the clubs that are running on the pitch, it's the fans, right? Yeah, but the fans, if they're uh, pay, saying, to, I pay good money to be a fan and say what yeah, I you, like, they still have to have a responsibility themselves. Oh, the course. fans do, yes. Yeah. Absolutely, but what, we're, what, the, what the advocation would be, well, what are the FA and EFL going to do? OK, what can they do? Because I hear a lot of people telling you what the problem is, but not a lot of people telling you what the solution is, right? So the FA are going to do what? Sanction the club. So you sanction a club for what a fan does. You can't prevent... Uh, a fan having a, something come out of his mouth that's inappropriate, whether it's racism or homophobia, you can only react to it. But in these situations, there needs to be better guidelines and accepting responsibility from the clubs themselves. Those clubs would have known, Everton would have known, dollars for donuts, there's going to be a pitch invasion. If they win this game and stay in the Premier League, I bet you that they knew there was going to be... So what are you going to do to stop well, it? Well, like you say, they, they came on five minutes or so before the game even finished. So, what's, so, so they uh, should have expected knows, it was going to happen at Forest beat Sheffield United in that playoff semi-final, play fans are going to come on the pitch. So what are you going to do about it? The simple answer is police it properly. But if... That, OK, and that's, that, that is what the And then you'd have is. another section but, of people saying, oh, my God, we're in a police state now. We've got well, police it's not all that, around the but stadium. Not, not, not only that, Simon, if you have more police and that's going to cost more, that's probably going to add to ticket costs, isn't it? No, because well, if well, you're... Surely some well, clubs will well, have to put well, up their well, ticket prices to pay for the extra well, okay, policing. OK, let me give you an answer to that. If you're playing in a playoff semi-final, did you budget for that income? Is that revenue that's in your cash income. flow? No, it's additional revenue. No, but Everton's game wasn't a playoff. Oh, yeah, but you're playing, but, you're, you're sorry, playing no for amount of stewards. No amount yes. of stewards. I understand what you're saying. No amount of stewards would have been able to stop those. Not not stewards. Police. Would the police be allowed, able to stop? I mean, we don't want to get back to a situation with if you put police, fencing all around the ground. Put, no, we don't want to do that. Ideally, we don't want to do that. But do you know what? Was there fencing all around the ground in Seville? No, because to tell you what, the guard is Seville, where I've lived for 20 years, and the police and national... 
but you don't, you don't muck about with them. If you put police officers inside that stadium, put a ring fenced it, right, and paid for it, it's a resource. The police would love to have it. It's a business model they actually appreciate. It pays for officers overtime and whatever else. Then you budget, you, you plan for exceptional circumstances. The Wembley situation, everybody knew that having a stadium that was two-thirds or a third empty was going to create a problem. And what did we do? We didn't police it. We had a police commission on a news network saying we were under-resourced. The, the, the planning and the professionalism and the maturity in football, because they don't, they don't care. They're actually happy. Football is happy to some extent that the fans are on the pitch. It's only when you pick the bones out of it and say, well, society's behaving badly, people have got a sense of entitlement, and eventually, when it goes beyond what happened to Billy Sharp, and it goes into a situation where something really serious happens. Everyone's going to say, well, why didn't someone do something about it? So future this? playoff games, we, we really need to be having proper policing at Correct. these venues. Okay, well, look, look, there's, there's more to Otherwise discuss on we'll be back this. here next year saying, talking about the same thing. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.